Hi, I'm Elaine, and welcome to my kitchen. And no, I'm not in my kitchen right now. I am in my little office center with the computer set up. What I wanted to talk to you about was an introduction to my channel. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and why I set the channel up. As I said, I'm Elaine. I am 52 years old and I am happily married. I'm a cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2013. I was scared. I had just lost an aunt to cancer the previous Thanksgiving. And at that time, I decided I was going to live my life and live out my dreams. I love to cook. And I've always wanted to write a cookbook. And I've never gotten around to it. I started watching some YouTube channels and seeing people living out their dreams, no matter what they are. No matter if it's cooking or if it's building a tiny house or just living their lives. And I decided I was going to live my life. And I decided to do a cooking channel. My husband is the happy guinea pig, and if y'all have watched any of my videos, you've heard him, and you know he can be a riot. I don't tell his name at his request. It's his choice to remain anonymous on this other than as the happy guinea pig. He is disabled due to nerve damage. But he tries to do the best he can and as much as he can with those limitations. The thing about it is, he loves it when I experiment with my cooking. Uh huh. And uh, this gives us both something that we can enjoy. I can cook and he gets to eat. Uh huh. So, this is something that's for both of us. And if you're wondering why I keep looking down, I've got my notes here on what I wanted to say so that I didn't forget anything. My channel, Allie, Welcome to My Kitchen, it's primarily a cooking channel. I will post and do post cooking videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And on Saturdays, I had planned to do a Q&A Saturday once the channel got going and I started getting comments and questions and things. And that way I can answer everybody's questions. But until then, I've been doing DIY kitchen projects. Uh, they're not full videos. It's pictures that we've taken together. And, you know, I put music to and explain what's going on. Uh, for we have remodeled our kitchen and built units to go into our kitchen. Um, I post again. I post this strictly on Saturday. <laughs> I'm also going to be doing some uh, project project reviews, no, product reviews uh, on things like my Denny multi cooker, uh, my roaster, my uh, Cuisinart air fryer, my Cuisinart uh, stovetop cooker, induction cooker. See, I can tell you this is live because I'm trying to remember these things off the top of my head. Sometimes I can't. Uh, I have my Hamilton Beach hand mixer. I have my KitchenAid mixer. You know, I have my food processor. All these little things, you know, I can do product reviews on to let you know what I like about them and what I don't like about them. I'm not getting paid to do the product reviews. It's just things that I have in my kitchen that I use fairly regularly that I can let you know about. Uh, we also have Facebook pages and a Facebook group. Uh, my husband and I had gotten off of Facebook last November. Decided, you know, we weren't really going to get back on it. And for the sake of our channel and being able to promote my YouTube channel, we decided to set up personal pages and Facebook pages for the channel itself. The Facebook page is called Aline, Welcome to My Kitchen. And there's another one called Happy Guinea Pig Eats Again. 
We also have a Facebook group page set up. And it's called Aline and HGP. Welcome to our kitchen. You're free to join any of those pages if you're on Facebook. Uh, free to join the group. I post everything I've put on YouTube, I post on those pages. Uh, the actual Facebook group is for people to discuss and talk about food. If you like to cook and like to see what I have cooked, please join. You can comment, you can post your own pictures of what you cook. I'd be more than happy to see it. And if you try one of my recipes that I've got posted, take a picture, show me what it looks like, tell me how you liked it. Yeah. So that's there for everyone to join and interact on. Um, my hopes for my channel. My hope is for my channel to succeed and for my subscribership to grow. I want my channel to be informative and I hope people will enjoy it. And I hope they get a laugh or two out of it. We hope so. <laughs> because I, I, I definitely, I, I laugh as I'm sitting there editing and trying to go through because uh, I laugh at my mistakes. I laugh at the happy guinea pig. <laughs> and I leave a lot of my mistakes in there. I don't care. I mean, it, it's real life. I'm not trying to say I'm in a studio. This is the way you have to do it. This is the way it's supposed to look. You know, I'm going to be posting one next week. You know, it was an experiment. And it turned out good as far as taste was. I would do a little, few little things different on it. But it's a learning process for everybody. For me, for you. So, you know, I, I'm not, even though I'm taking this channel seriously, I'm not taking myself seriously. You know, I, t I say on my videos all the time, your kitchen, your rules, my kitchen, my rules. And that's how I truly believe and what I truly believe. You use what you have in your kitchen. You use the items that you like. And if you've never tried something before, don't know if you like it or not, I'd say try to, you know, sample it and see if you do. You never know. You might find something else that you like. If you're not comfortable with cooking something or using something to cook with, you know, work your way up to it. I can be honest with you. I've been cooking now for, I would say, roughly 40 years. Off and on for, for 40 years. And over that 40-year period, I have challenged myself to try new foods, to try new cooking ways, to try new ingredients. Because I wanted to say, and do say, that I am willing to try anything when it comes to eating. I mean, there's some foods out there I don't like. I've tried octopus. I don't like octopus. You know, I'm not big on capers, but I will eat them. It's just, it's whatever you like. And whatever you're comfortable doing. So, I really hope that... Uh, if nothing else, maybe you learn something from my videos. And if you don't learn anything, at least maybe you'll get a laugh. Okay. How I learned to cook. I know I'm not really saying, going going into these. I'm just writing, going down my list on what I've got written down. But uh, we ain't pros. No, I'm I'm definitely not a pro. I'm I'm learning as I go with this. But how I learned to cook. I watched my granny cook when I was a kid. My mom and I lived with my grandmother. And my granny was the primary cook. And she was probably one of the best cooks I have ever in my life come across. Thank you, granny. <laughs> she took nothing and made something out of it. And from watching her and tasting her cooking, for seven years, you know, I learned to appreciate home cooking. My granny died when I was seven, so all the memories I have of her cooking are from a childhood standpoint. Now, I also learned from my mama. My mama was a good cook. She wasn't a fancy cook. 
she took what she had and made good with it. I tell my husband all the time, I learned to love macaroni and cheese because of my mama. And my mama could take those little boxes, 10 cent boxes, I'm sure some of you out there might remember them little boxes about yay tall that you pay a dollar and a half for in the grocery store today. That when we were kids, they were like 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents. Well, mama could take that and make it taste like homemade. To this day, I can't do that. Now, I can make really good mac and cheese, but I can't take a cheap box of macaroni and cheese and make it taste homemade, especially when it's got that powdered cheese stuff in it. But my mama could, and she's one of the ones that taught me how to cook. I also learned from many others over the years, and I'll be naming them later on. But there's so many that I can't remember the names of everybody. I have good friends that I've learned from, Anita, Bootsy, Georgette, uh, Ward, you know, I've learned a lot from them, Mama Evelyn, like I said, I, I'll name everybody later, that, that's just a few right there that I've learned different things from over the years, and you may hear me mention them in my videos when I'm cooking certain dishes. But, uh, yeah, that, that's how I learned to cook, by watching and observing, asking questions. And I'll tell you right now, you find an older lady or an older gentleman that knows how to cook, watch them, learn from them, because they can tell you things you'll never know. Um, I listed... Something I really liked, which was my mom's homemade macaroni, well, my mom's macaroni and cheese. To me, it was homemade. To her, it was box stuff with powdered cheese stuff. But that's one of my all-time favorite foods. My other was my granny's sweet potato pie. I can make a decent sweet potato pie. And I have tasted some really good sweet potato pies. But I can remember my granny's. And that's saying a lot. That's, what, 40 some odd years ago. At least 45 years ago and I can still remember the taste of her sweet potato pie and how good it was so to me that's what I strive for I strive to be able to recreate that because it is one of my favorite foods and I strive to become the cook that my granny and my mom were now, the favorite dish that I cook myself, and there's a lot of them that I like. I, I love a lot of the things I fix. But my all-time favorite thing that I fix myself is my sweet potato casserole because of how I make it. And I will be making that for the channel here uh, probably in a couple of weeks uh, for my Thanksgiving dinner that I'm going to be doing. And it's going to be basically Thanksgiving on a budget for two to four people. You know, with a twist on the actual Thanksgiving dinner. So, you know, if you watch the channel, you can watch for that. And see how I make my sweet potato casserole and why I like it. Now, I asked the hat guinea pig what his all-time favorite dish that I cook is. And he gave me an answer. How can I possibly choose? That's right. I mean, I, I was sitting there, I was naming off several dishes that I cooked that I know he really likes. And he said, see, how can I choose? So, that's his answer. I'm assuming he likes all of my stuff, so he has a hard time choosing his favorite. My favorite is to cook. <laughs> okay. What are my favorite foods to eat when eating out? I love Mexican and I love Chinese food. We have two favorite restaurants right now that we like to go to. They're basically next door to each other. So we have to choose which we want to eat at. And the one, the Mexican restaurant, is called Bayartas. And the Chinese restaurant is called Fortune Cookie. And 
Great process. Great food. Awesome portion sizes. And the first time we went to the Chinese restaurant, we did not realize how big the portion sizes were. And we each ordered a plate. And one plate will feed up to four people, I think, because we usually bring about half of it home, if not more. So, you know, we learned that when we go in, we're going to order one plate with maybe some soup, and egg rolls, or whatever, and leave it at that because otherwise we're going to have food for two or three, four days. So, yeah, great food, great prices, and for us, great location. It's only maybe maybe what, maybe 25 minute drive from here, if that. So, 20 miles max. Yeah. So it, it works for us. Okay. Now, my final thing is, what would y'all like to see me cook or bake? Got a list here. A meat dish, a vegetable dish, a side that's not a vegetable, soup, casserole, bread, pie, cake, cookies. If there's a specific thing that you might like to see me try to make, now, I will ask you to do this. If you leave something in comments, please do not leave anything with chocolate in it. My husband is definitely allergic to chocolate. If he eats it, he'll be dead in the floor within 24 hours. He's dropped like that twice on me, and I don't want that to happen again. Sad but true. And I just, I do not cook anything with chocolate, even though I would love to. And if I ever do cook anything with chocolate, I'll have to make sure he's out of the house in a way until I can get the house aired out. Because even the fumes of it is like poison to him. It makes him really sick to even smell it. So, you know, leave anything in comments as far as what you would like to see me to cook or to do. And I will do my best to make it. I will choose the one that has the most comments. If you somebody choose the meat dish, or if you say, I want to see you make a certain type of cake or a certain type of cookie, and that gets quite a few comments, I will choose the one that has the most comments on it, and I will make that. And what I will do is um, one month from the date I post this video, which will be on Saturday, uh, September the 24th. So on October the 24th, I will take and I will choose from all the comments that are on this video and choose the dish that I'm going to make. And I will let everybody know in comments what I've chosen and I will also post on my Facebook pages and the Facebook group what I have chosen to do off the video. Okay. Now, I said I would list people in my life that I learned to cook from. I'm going to put a, t uh, a card up on the video with these names on it, but uh, just know that these are people who I have learned something from over the years. Granny, her name is Selma. My mama, who's Eva May. My aunts, my Aunt Shirley, my Aunt Ruthie, my Aunt Elsie, my Aunt Lois, and Belinda. I've learned something from all of them and all of them. My special moms, Mama Hazel and Mama Evelyn. Mama, Mama Hazel taught me how to make zucchini bread. And the way she did that was she gave me her recipe and she said, make it. I'm, okay, I will. I like her pinto bean pie. Oh, man. I will make that for y'all one day. Pinto bean pie. It's made with pinto beans. Oh, man, it tastes like a coconut pecan pie. It is so good. You wouldn't know it's pintos. That's the truth of it. My sisters, I want to say, you know, I learned this from my sisters that I've learned from. Anita, Georgette, Bootsy, Loretta, my sister in law Georgia, my brothers, 
And now when I say sisters and brothers, I'm saying sisters of the heart and brothers of the heart because I'm an only child. But God has brought some wonderful people into my life to be my family. Now my brothers are Ward and Philip. Ward is an outstanding cook in his own right. Philip, uh, he can work a grill better than probably anybody I've ever seen in my life. His ribs off of the grill, oh, so good, so good. Had a teacher in high school, Mrs. Gillum. She taught food production class, and it was a vocational class that I took, and I learned a lot from her, and that really got me started in wanting to cook and do things with cooking. Uh, some special, special ladies in my life. Miss Bobby, Miss Ethel, and Linda, and my mother-in-law Elaine. Now, I've learned a lot from them. Some special men in my life that I've learned stuff from are Stan and my father-in-law Carl, my stepdad George. I, I've learned different things from them. My stepdad taught me how to make cornbread. And the recipe he gave me, I won a blue ribbon in 4-H in third grade. And I was proud of that. So, you know, even at that time I was learning. And the cornbread turned out really good. And there's a couple of other ladies that I would like to mention. I don't know if one of them is still with us or not. I know the first one's not. Miss Ruthie Limbaugh. She was my dad's stepdad's cousin. I spent some time with her and learned from her. She was definitely an old fashioned cook. And I watched her make red eye gravy and other gravies. Just like I said, old fashioned cook, and I would ask questions and she'd tell me what she did. You know, loved watching her cook and loved learning from her. And that was back when I was a kid. You know, so that's been a good probably 40 years since I've seen her. And so I, I know she's passed away by now. And Miss Ophelia Brazier, she was married to one of my stepdad's cousins. And I learned a lot from her again from watching her and that's how I've learned most of my cooking is through watching and observing experimenting I'll take a recipe see one that I like and adjust it to me might change an ingredient or change how much of an ingredient I use but I change it to suit my taste and that's what it is about cooking, you know. If you're going to cook, you don't have to follow somebody else's recipe. You can use it as a guideline. But when it comes to seasoning foods, if they use something you have never heard of or that you don't know how to get a hold of, then use what works for you. If you don't like garlic, don't use garlic or garlic powder or garlic salt. Substitute what you like. If you don't like onion powder or onion, don't use onion. Use something different. It's all about making your kitchen yours and making the recipe and the food yours and to your taste. When you're in that kitchen and you're cooking, no one should be able to tell you you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. Cooking should be an, ex an experiment. It should be exciting. It should be fun. It should be something that you look forward to. Not just a chore to get done so that you have something to eat. I love to cook. And I hope with my videos that I can express that. And express how much I love food to everyone. And if something don't turn out right, don't look at it bad. Look at it as a learning curve. That's right. If it turns out bad, well, well, it didn't turn out this time. So I'll change it and I'll fix it. I've had a lot of stuff that didn't turn out right. <laughs> Believe me on that one. Uh, 
I try and, and I keep trying and I keep trying to improve and it's like I said I've got a video coming out this coming Monday on the, the 26th it was an experiment it was something that I came up with and I had never cooked before but I cooked it and videoed it and it's like I said there's a few things I would change but overall it was good and might not have look the best it wasn't perfect but it tasted good and to me that's that's all that counts that's all that counts right there is the fact that it tastes good every time i go for perfection something always messes up and i get upset so i've learned it don't have to be perfect if it tastes good it looks halfway decent that's all that matters but my thing is, you know, enjoy the cooking process. E enjoy the videos. You know, enjoy the recipes. Take them. Make them your own. And uh, I guess really that's all I have to say right now. But I do want to say this. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you if you have subscribed to my channel. And if you have not, please do. And if you subscribe, please click on that little bell icon. So that you can be notified when I have new videos uploaded. And if you would give me thumbs up on my videos. I really uh, enjoy those. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. I don't care. I mean, that way at least I know you've watched it and that you didn't like it. And if you did give me a thumbs down, if you could, leave me a comment and tell me why. And it might be something I can change. And then again, it might be something I don't want to change. But at least I'll know. And... You know, if you like the video, leave a comment. Tell me what you liked about it. Or if you have a question about something, ask me. I'll be more than happy to try to answer. Because I try to leave comments back, thanking everybody for the, the comments they leave. But, uh, you know, if you would, share the videos. If you really liked the video and got something from it, you know, share it. If you have a Facebook page and you don't mind, share it on your Facebook. Share it with your friends. If you're in cooking groups or whatever and they don't mind you sharing videos, share it in the cooking video, uh, cooking group. I would appreciate it and it will help my channel to grow. And as my channel grows, I can put out more videos and hopefully have more subscribers and make this grow until I can make a living off of this. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not hurting right now, but we do okay. But I would like to have this be my primary source of income because I love doing it. And it does take time to put the videos out. It takes time to video, it takes time to edit, it takes time to put everything up. So, you know, I, th that's what I'm hoping for my job. And as long as I can do this, I will, whether I get paid or not. Because I'm going to cook for my husband and I. And I might as well have fun videoing while I'm doing it. If nothing else, it'd be a video vlog of library recipes that she's done. It'll be my video uh, recipe book. And maybe after a year, year and a half or two, I might actually make a, a cookbook to go with this. But again, I thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a great day. Bye, y'all.